Hello, Stephen. Hello. Hello. Hi, how are you? Are you listening to us? I can hear you just fine. Okay. Uh, we would like to give a special thanks to NASA for this initiative. Uh, we are really feeling great to be a part of NASA Space Up Challenge from Bangladesh. Uh, my name is Arifun Hasanapo. I'm the director of Bangladesh Association of Software Information Services, BASIS, and the coordinator of NASA Space Up Challenge, host country Bangladesh. First, we would like to introduce with our honorable chief guest, Mike Tetsubura. Our honorable chief guest, ICT Ministry, Mr. Jumel Damar Paul is here with us. Hello. Okay. Uh, there are our, our uh, BASIS, Bangladesh Association of Software Information Services, BASIS President, also here Mr. Sain Shainwasan with us, and Mr. Ayan Omar Ali, Vice Chancellor of Independent University of Bangladesh. And Mahmoud Jaman is here, now can founder of Bangladesh. Uh, thank you, Ellen. And now I um, I question you for give us uh, or tell us about NASA. Okay, then after your uh, 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 conclusion, our honourable minister and our president, uh, Mr. Samarasan, is here. Uh, they will talk with you and conversation with you about Bangladesh, Bangladesh IT industry, what is our mission, uh, all things. Thank you very much. Thank you. Um, it's a little hard for me to hear you because there's a lot of echo, but I think you just asked me to talk. So <laughs> I'm going to go ahead and speak. Um, thank you so much for having me here today. It, it's absolutely such an honor. Um, Space Fest is one of my favorite events of the year uh, because it's a way at NASA for us to bring the whole world along with us in what we do. You know, as, as NASA, we are trying to explore the solar system, explore the universe, explore our own home planet. We can't do this on our own because we very well know that the best minds, the, best, the most creative people, are not just located in the United States. They're located all around the world. They're located in Bangladesh. And we need help. And SpaceX is a way for us to bring everyone on board with us. And I have really been amazed. We are in 193 locations in 72 countries this year. Every year, more and more people coming on board. Uh, and it's incredibly exciting. I have read about how much work you have done across Bangladesh to get ready for this event. All the people who participated, it's terribly exciting. And I can't tell you how excited I am to be part of your event today because what we're doing is amazing. I thought I would at least give you a little idea of, of our priorities right now at NASA to give you a little touch of what we're thinking about as we try to study our universe, our solar system, our planet. I have the great fortune of being the principal scientific advisor to the NASA administrator, Charlie Bolden, who's an amazing man who flew on the space shuttle five times. I've never been in space, that's way too far for me. But it is exciting to me, as somebody who studies the planets of our solar system, to really try to understand how we use NASA data to understand the universe. One of my favorite images is an image called the Hubble Deep Field Image, where we took the Hubble Space Telescope and we focused on the not darkest part of the night sky. What we saw after taking days to collect very, very faint bits of light were thousands of galaxies. Now these galaxies formed only a few billion years after the Big Bang. And yet already in the universe we see incredibly, incredible complexity. Really 
telling us how much we still need to learn about the origins of the universe, how it changed in its earliest time period. In two years, we're going to launch a telescope called the James Webb Space Telescope that will be able to look further back in time to just a few hundred million years after the Big Bang. This will really help us to understand what was going on in the universe at that very early stage. So we're very excited about that. And of course, those data will be available around the world for everyone to study. When we look at our own solar system, we've been very excited in the past year to get data back from Pluto. Now there is a controversy over whether Pluto is a planet or a dwarf planet, but of course Pluto is only about a third the size of our own moon. Yet we've been very surprised by how complex the surface of Pluto is. It's got canyons, it's even got some volcanoes on the surface, and from a scientific point of view, this actually doesn't make a lot of sense. Because things like volcanoes, canyons, geology, they're produced by heat inside a planet. And Pluto is so small, we don't know where that heat is coming from. And so it's very exciting uh, to try to understand how Pluto works. So again, another challenge for the students in the audience today Help us understand how Pluto works. It's a big mystery. One of the biggest things we're trying to study right now in our solar system is Mars. And we've been amazed at learning over the past few years with our Curiosity rover that for early in Mars's history, it actually had water on its surface, we think for about a billion years. Now that's important because at that time, Jupiter actually evolved here on Earth. It was about the same time when Earth had life, uh, water on its surface, that life first evolved here on Earth. And life stayed in our oceans for well over a billion years. So we would like to answer the question, did life also evolve on Mars? So we have rovers on the surface. We still have the Curiosity rover and the, uh, the Opportunity rover. We have missions that orbit around Mars, and of course the international community also has, has uh, uh, orbiters around Mars, including the European Space Agency and the Indian Space Agency. And we've been working recently with the United Arab Emirates Space Agency, who also planned to launch a mission to Mars in 2020. So the whole world is interested in Mars because of this really basic question. Are we alone? Did life evolve on Mars? And when Mars lost its oceans, we would really like to know, did life go underground on Mars? And is there still life? And when I'm talking about life, I certainly mean microbes, not complex life. Or did all the life on Mars become extinct? Because we think it probably went extinct, and it was only at the level of microbes. We think it's actually probably going to take humans on the surface of Mars to actually determine whether or not life evolved on Mars. So NASA is working very hard to try to figure out how to get humans to Mars. And again, as a geologist, and I go out in the field and I study volcanoes, I think it's really important to get geologists down on the surface of Mars. So how is NASA going to do this? Well, the first step is to work on the International Space Station as we do every day. And the International Space Station is really an amazing platform for us to study the long duration effects of microgravity on the human body. And that's some of our app, you know, are in this category of living and working in space. Because microgravity isn't the best environment for humans. We lose immune system function. We lose cardiovascular system function. We, our muscles waste, our bone density goes down. It's not a great place. So over the years, NASA and our international partners have been developing ways to keep the astronauts healthy for long periods of time in space. 
For example, the exercise, about an hour and a half to two hours every day. And that actually keeps your bone density and your muscles in pretty good shape. Over this past year, we had two astronauts, Mikhail Kornienko, cosmonaut from Russia, and Scott Kelly, an astronaut from the US, up on the space station for a year. Most astronauts would only go up for about six months, but we wanted to see what would be the effects on humans to stay very much longer in space. And um, Scott just came back, and Scott and Mikhail just came back about a month ago. And right now we're running lots of tests on them to see what's the difference between six months in space and a year in space. Because the trip to Mars is about seven to eight months, then you'd be in reduced gravity on the surface, and then about seven to eight months back. So we want to make sure that we can send humans to Mars and keep them healthy so that when they land on Mars, they'll be able to work. And then we need to get them home safe and healthy again. At the same time we're working on the space station, we're also working on technologies that would help us get to Mars. For example, we have had a 3D printer up on the space station. Because obviously if you're, if you're going to Mars on an eight month journey and things are breaking, you can't bring every spare part along with you. You'd like to say, okay, that valve or that particular part, I can print a new one and replace it. But obviously you want to make sure that anything you print in space is of suitable quality to put into a system that human life might depend on. And so we've been doing testing on our parts that you print in space, do they still have the integrity of parts printed here on Earth? Because microgravity has such a big effect. So we've been really excited about the work we've been doing on the space station. Starting in the early 2020s, we're going to launch astronauts out to the vicinity of the moon, where we will continue to develop the capabilities such as a long-duration transfer vehicle that will get humans to Mars. We're building a new rocket called the Space Launch System that will have the power to launch astronauts out to the moon. Our rockets now are too small. You need a bigger rocket. Uh, and we're building something called the Orion capsule that sits on top of the Space Launch System that can support about six people for about 21 days. So then the next step is to build the Mars habitat or Mars transfer vehicle. Now, when I'm talking about NASA doing this, we're not doing this on our own. There are 16 countries from around the world involved in something called the Global Exploration Roadmap. And we are talking with all the space agencies of the world saying, when we move humans beyond the Earth orbit, NASA doesn't want to do this on our own. We want to do it with our international partners. Anybody who wants to participate should come with us and help. Now, that first crew went on Mars. I hope they look a lot more like all the people of the Earth, not like the Apollo crew that first went to the moon. So that first crew that goes to Mars will be an international crew and we'll have people from all around the world. Stefan, sorry for interrupting. Uh, I want to take this. Uh, Mr. Zunad and Paul actually have another program. So he wants to talk with you for some moment. Then we'll come back again. Okay. So, okay. Uh, uh, Mr. Zunad and Paul, MP, Oregon State Minister, IC Division, Government of the People Republic of Bangladesh, to tell something about Bangladesh and, uh, and details. Uh, 